I would describe Finn as a lovable rogue. He's uh, a little naughty, um, very privileged, and um, quite the drinker. Um, so yeah, I didn't think that the audience would take well to him, but apparently he was quite popular, which is good, I think. Amy created the role because she said she wanted to add a little bit of uh, edge to the show, and I guess she thought I was a little edgy, and that's how Finn came about. Being cast on Gilmore Girls was um, pretty special, actually. I was really lucky. Uh, I had just gotten to America, and um, uh, Amy wanted Matt Zucri for a role, um, but Warner Brothers said that they had to audition some other people, so they brought me in as fodder, really, and obviously I didn't get the role of Logan, but Amy thought we'd like to have him on as a sidekick, and that's how the Life and Death Brigade started. I think the Life and Death Brigade certainly brought something different to the show, and there was a certain camaraderie between us all. For me, that was kind of fortuitous because everything I'd done up until that point was in the theatre, so the three of us or the four of us would get together and we would have poker nights or, you know, we would go on little bro nights or, you know, we did things a lot. We never spent time in our trailers alone. We were always together. We would run lines together. We would do anything we could together, basically. And I think that shows on screen. You can tell that we genuinely like each other and we had a great time. And I, I think that was really my MO, was just have fun. And uh, we had a lot of fun. The thing I really remember about shooting my first scene at Yale was um, the director was Kenny Ortega. And Kenny Ortega um, is, is famous for directing a lot of Michael Jackson's videos and has done a lot of big productions, a lot of big musicals. And the consistent note he gave me during that episode was bigger, Tank, bigger, bigger, bigger. Hold on, hold on. Yes, here, yeah. this is where she lives. And so I was having a load of fun putting on this, you know, big over-the-top performance. Um, which didn't end well, uh, because next week I'd gotten a note from Warner Brothers saying, Tank, we need you to just turn it down a bit. So, yeah. And nail polish. I think I had nail polish on in that episode. I had nail polish for a couple of episodes, yeah. Yeah, we tried to push the boundaries a little. Favourite moments as Finn were... Uh, number one, the scene with Ed Herman. What are you doing with that? That's my tennis racket. I told you she didn't point to the closet on the right. Well, then I have no idea what closet she was pointing to. I suppose these humidors aren't hers either. Pity. Any chance you're sick of them? I promise to give them a nice home and show them a picture of you every year at Christmas. Which was... It was just one of those moments where the connection we had with the three... It was the only scene I shot with him, which was, was a lot of fun. The second scene would be You Jump, I Jump, Jack. That was an exterior, it was a very lavish shoot. We were running out of light and I think the cinematographer ended up walking off set um, because we didn't have enough light. He didn't want to shoot it and Amy said, I'll shoot it. And so that whole scene with the skirmish gun is one take. All right, I'm bored. I want to be a target. You're always a target, Ben. In Omnia Paratus. Um, that's why it's a steady cam, and it was just like, it was a great way to bring everyone together. Uh, the third scene, I would say, was the revival. Doing the tango in the revival, we spent a good month rehearsing that, so that was a lot of fun. In regards to some of Finn's lines, um, yes, they are often quoted back to me which came at a complete surprise because I had no idea these lines would mean anything. I actually questioned Amy on some of the lines. I didn't think internally that they were particularly funny or resonant or important in any way, shape or form. Um, but apparently they were. Uh, what's that? Um, God is speaking to me rather rudely. Good morning, New Haven. My, my, you look fresh and appealing tonight. Shut up. God has spoken to me, rather rudely. My God, those are good genes. I'm Colin, this is Finn, and you are? Her mother. My God, those are good genes. Yeah, that was a good one. We improved the little thing. That was, that was like the little stuff that we could do. 
Yeah, I remember reading that thinking, I don't really, but yeah, that's a good line. Why do I think Gilmore Girls is loved 20 years later? That is a great question. I can tell you why it was loved originally. I think it was because it was the first show that really championed smart, intellectual, articulate women. I don't think at that point in time there was anything like that. It was also the first show that tackled with single mums um, and the challenges of raising a child uh, and the dynamic between those two. I don't think there was anything like that at the time, which is why a lot of people resonated with the show. It appealed to a younger and an older audience, as in the, the mums and the um, daughters. What's interesting 20 years later is now a lot of the people that were watching the show for Rory are now watching it for Lorelei because they're now the mothers and so that's kind of flipped. I still get messages on social media every day about how connected people feel to Gilmore Girls. It really is a special show. I think that's a wonderful to be a part of. Um, I feel very grateful and I'm glad that Amy brought this to the world.